Well, let's get into the geeky stuff. Speaking of, uh, let's talk a little bit about Exposure Lock. I asked Jeff to talk about this uh, today because, Jeff, you did an awesome episode of Photo Taco. Uh, We always get lots of new listeners, so I'm just going to go over something very basic. Those of you listening to the podcast are like, are you serious? You didn't know this? Uh, You can get our podcasts uh, downloaded to your phone automatically every week. Uh, If you're on an iPhone, you already have the podcast app downloaded. Just press in the middle of your screen and swipe down and then type podcasts and you have an app to do this and then just search photo taco improved photography portrait session and you can or in tripod and you'll get all of our shows automatically downloaded well jeff's photo taco is uh, usually around 10 minutes long sometimes 10 to 20 minutes let's call it now um uh, episodes on just different techniques in photography uh, and it is the show has really hit its stride lately, Jeff. You've you've done a great job with it, and you did an interesting episode recently on exposure lock. It's something that I almost never use. So tell us about <laughs> when we could use exposure lock and uh, and uh, how we do this. Okay, so this came from a listener question, and the show it feeds a lot off of listener questions. And what I do is. Uh, every episode is completely dedicated to a specific topic. So I don't go through like five or six listener questions. It is, I pick one listener question and I spend, it's actually probably, I think it's averaging more like 30 minutes lately. lately. <laughs> it's a, you eat a lot of tacos. It's, yeah. It's yeah. not a one taco I, show I, anymore. People say I need to change the intro because we, <laughs> Jim says in the intro, in the time it takes to eat a taco. And, in yeah, the time you, it takes to eat several tacos yeah, and a burrito yeah. and a couple of enchiladas. Uh, okay. So, so the listener asked about exposure lock and when I saw the question, I was like, well, I, I roughly know what it is, but like you, Jim, I never used it. Brian, do you ever use exposure lock? Yeah, I do. You do? You do. How do you use it, Brian? I've when used it do before, you use, just, I mean, not how, but when do you use it? Uh, I'll use it sometimes just when I'm, when I'm doing some family portraits and, you know, if there's our, you know, little, little ones that moving around or up and down and yeah, I just do. I don't, okay, cool. I mean, I don't, I don't think about it a whole lot. <laughs> All right. So it, it wasn't something that fit into most of the work that I did. I landscape. There's no, no reason for it that I can think of. Um, even in the family portraits, uh, I generally just stick in the manual. The light changes a little bit because I do it outdoors most of the time, but not so fast that it ends up being a massive problem most of the time for exposure. So I haven't personally used the feature a whole lot. I did when I first was learning, when I was fir- I first got my camera, because I wasn't ever in manual mode. I was petrified of it at first, of course. Uh, everyone seems to go through that phase. But so in, in those semi-auto modes, that, that's the first part of this is it only applies in either automatic or semi-auto modes like aperture priority or shutter priority. It won't do anything in manual. And then you, uh, the idea is you can kind of provide some hints to your camera or override your camera a a little bit more than normal by, by locking the exposure. So you can point your camera to a place where you want it it to meter from, and then you can hit the, uh, the exposure auto lock button. It's configurable and different on every camera. So you're going to have to look up how to do that or go listen to the episode. I walked through how to do it hands on camera for both Nikon and Canon. And there's some differences between how those two worked as well. But that's, that's the idea is you, you put the camera so that you say, I want a meter from this setting. You hit the lock. It will not, even in the auto mode, um, it won't change the, the exposure settings based on the metering until you take the picture or you take the lock off. It, it varies by the camera kind of how it behaves. But that's the idea. Uh, you can kind of tell your camera, stop worrying about the metering and stop changing the exposure settings for a second. Here's how I want you to meter and just keep using these settings. And um, so the the biggest, the best use case I heard, I I asked listeners, actually, I I did a poll on social media to say, does anyone ever use this? I did it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, sent out a poll and said, uh, who uses this? And most people, the vast majority either said, I don't use it. I know what it is, but I don't use it, or I don't know what that is. So I think I know the answer to this, Jeff, but is there any reason to use exposure lock if you're using back button focus? That's something that Nathan Goldberg is is mentioning on, on Facebook Live. So they, they can be kind of closely related, and it's part of the reason I don't use 
exposure lock much because I do I've I've remapped what the default button is for that. It's the asterisk button on the Canon camera. That's the one that that does exposure lock, or by default it's configured that way. And I configured it for back button focus, so it no it doesn't do exposure lock anymore in that setting. However, the one right next to it, the, it's called AE. AEL, I think is anyway. There's another button. Auto exposure right. lock, yeah. AE on. Or, anyway, um, that one can still be mapped. It, it, there's configuration of you can do configurability. The the one of the things though, so it, it doesn't have anything to do with focus. That's that's part of what you have to make sure you understand. It's about exposure. It will also lock your white balance though. So if you have your camera set to do auto white balance, it will also lock your white balance. Um, that might be camera specifics. You'd have to look in your user's manual to make sure that's true for your camera. But for the ones I looked at in Canon and Nikon, that seemed to be um, pretty consistent, that it would also lock your white balance settings. So that, that could be a reason to, to, to configure it. Uh, but it really, back button focus is a pretty different thing uh, for the most part than, than exposure lock. Just that um, it's going to be using a similar button. Yeah, you can configure the button on some cameras. Some of the more entry level, inexpensive ones, you don't even get much of a choice. You can either have it do exposure lock or focus lock or both, but you can't have it do other things. So, um, but but the the best use case that I had for it, since most people said they don't use it, I was like, why then do camera manufacturers put it in there? If it's something that like, nobody uses, why is it there? Yeah, and why and, is it so important that it has a dedicated button? A dedicated button. There are a lot of on, things you could use that button for. Right, right. So, um, but but I had a so I, I asked in the Photo Taco episode. I said if you use it, I'd really love to hear from you about what use case you use it under. So because maybe I have to be missing something. Why it's there in every? It's clearly a feature that the camera makers feel like should be there. So what am I missing? And Mario. I don't, I'm going to slaughter his last name, McGollin. <laughs> Mario, I'm sorry. Um, he he uh, provided me with a really good use case. So, and he even included some, some pictures in our Photo Taco Facebook group where um, he takes, he does a lot of stage performance shoots. And stage lighting, if, you can, if you've been to theatrical performances, uh, musicals or plays or something like that, the lighting, of course, is extremely different across that stage. Yeah. And um, so he uses it for that. He only has usually very little time to try to get shots as the light is moving around on the performers on the stage. So, he, so why use that, though, instead of just shooting in manual then? Well, it, if it could be consistent from spot to spot to spot on the stage, I suppose manual and set it in and, and have it be one setting across all of them. But what he's saying is his experience has been the light is so drastically different that you can't, you don't have a chance that it's not, oh, it's it just work. too fast. Yeah. To, to go okay. manual. You, you can't switch the settings fast enough in manual mode. For you, or you're going to lose all kinds of shots. So well, that's actually a pretty cool use for it. I, I never yeah. would have thought of that, but that's that's pretty cool. And, and so you it, that way he kind of gets the same control over what you get with manual mode, but he's using automated modes to, to make it so that it figures out how to change the settings for him, but he's kind of directing the camera about how he wants it to change it a little bit more intelligently. So I thought that was a really, I've never shot stage performance, so I, I wouldn't know how that goes, but I thought, oh, I, that makes a little bit of sense to me that that would be a really solid use case for it and something that uh, I, I would guess you'd have to practice. I'd probably be terrible at it if I went and tried it right now, but if, if you got a lot of practice at it, it would be a, a pretty cool thing to do. So if you want more detail, go check out the Photo Taco episode on auto exposure lock. To find that or it, really any Photo Taco episode, the best way to find them on, and see if there's one on any subject. I've got a couple of years of backlog now of, of episodes. You can just do a Google search of photo space taco space the subject, whatever it is, in this case, exposure lock. And it will probably be one of the first results that comes up from the Google. Very cool.